Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of Astrophotography Japan. This little adventure captured on film for you today again heads to coastal Japan. Shown here to orient you is a road trip outlined from top to bottom which starts around Shin Yokohama near to my home and ends at the Miura Peninsula just south of Yokohama. At the tip of this peninsula is a fishing town called Misaki and a small rocky coastal island called Jogashima. By car, assuming no traffic, the trip takes a little over one hour. これは金メダルですか金メダルです。大好きです。そうです。どうも。Okay, so we stopped for lunch before we decided to go to Jogashima Island. This, uh, this is my friend Junichi Hosori. Hi, Paul. <laughs> so, uh, a rather impressive lunch here. Um, and it's mostly maguro, uh, tuna. And this is fried tuna here, and that's raw tuna there. You, actually, you actually have minchi tuna, right? Yes. So that's like a minced tuna steak kind of thing, mm. uh, of which we're going to share. Yes. And Paul is having enjoying uh, beer, of yes. course. Thank you very much. Looking <laughs> forward to tonight. Hopefully okay. that the clouds hold off so we okay. get some good photography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. part of this island, in what is now a protected park and wildlife reserve, 
was once a site of coastal fortifications constructed over 100 years ago in the Meiji period when Japan began to open up trade with the West. From the cliffs of this site, cannons and later howitzers of the Imperial Navy protected the waters leading up to the capital city of Tokyo. But first, we explored the west side of the island to scout out potentially good spots for astrophotography. It's like almost any kind of uh, uh, seaside sort of souvenir stores, you know? Shells and things like that. So I stayed at this hotel one time here. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Okay. It's just like that, the place we stayed at in, uh, in Ugada. Look at people swimming here. I always thought this would be a great place to swim. So this is due south, I guess, huh? This way. And that's sort of yeah. east over there. Yeah. Oh, but there's a lighthouse right there. That's right. We can climb up to the hill. That's called a uguisu, right? Oh, yes. That bird, yeah. Very famous. Mm -hmm. Video, いいですか? <laughs> oh, mate, <to> JP Astro Guy here, my name is Paul. South of Yokohama this evening, on the Tokyo Bay side. You can probably even see across the bay, the Chiba Peninsula is that landmass over there. This is about a Bortle Class 4 area. So we've got some dark skies and I'll be going after a fairly dim nebula uh, today, this evening, tonight. <laughs> I've got my wide field set up here my Ascar FMA 135 lens on my ASI 533 MC Pro camera that captures a 4.8 degrees of sky. So, skies are looking good right now. Uh, let's see what we can get accomplished tonight. Thanks for joining. <laughs> actually is the Blue Horsehead Nebula. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to capture this tonight, but so far it's looking very good. I started off with the Optolong L Extreme filter and I really wasn't picking much up. So then I, after about 15 minutes of that, switched over to a UHC filter, Optolong Ultra High Contrast filter, and that really did the trick. Now I'm picking up a lot of the nebulosity, even getting some blueness in the image here. Uh, so it's looking really good. Tracking has been going quite well with my uh, AZ-GTI mount. 
I'm at 1.12 arc seconds right now. Uh, on a very wide field like this, that's more than enough. So, clouds have held off. It's currently 10.30. I've already got 99 or 100 minutes of uh, image data. So, uh, I'm very pleased so far. Things are going well. I started photographing the Blue Horsehead Nebula from around 20 after 8. On this date, it rises in the southeast and crosses the meridian a little before 11.30 p.m. From this latitude, this reflection nebula gets only about 32 degrees above the horizon, making it a difficult target to photograph on the bright city horizons. Hence, I came to these darker skies. You know, it's 11 o'clock and still don't see any clouds. So this is one of those nights where the forecast actually was wrong and it worked to our favor. Another interesting thing is I realized earlier in the evening that looking out over Tokyo Bay, this is the flight path for the landing planes at Haneda Airport. Luckily, they're low enough that it didn't interfere with the astrophotography, um, but I guess I should have expected that. Time for an update. It's after midnight. I got over two and a half hours on the Blue Horsehead Nebula and it's looking really good. So I decided to switch to a new target. I am now going after the Cat's Paw Nebula and the War and Peace Nebula. These are very close together. They're quite small. They both easily fit within the field of view of my Ascar FMA 135 lens but I did have to change to back to the Optolong L-Extreme filter because they have a lot of red nebulosity. So that's my next target. They're both below 20 degrees in the sky, and this is the place to capture things like that over the dark ocean on a Bortle 4 class sky. Here's my friend Junichi here. He's working on a cluster in the Lagoon Nebula. This is his telescope here. It's 700 millimeter focal length it's a 102 uh, millimeter aperture fpl 53 doublet refractor he's not using any filters but in these dark skies it really seems to be coming out quite well We didn't stay until sunup since high level clouds began to obscure imaging. So soon thereafter we packed up and drove back to Yokohama, arriving well before rush hour on Monday morning. Okay, let's rock and roll. I have to give Junichi a lot of credit on his driving, especially since I could hardly keep my eyes open on the ride home. In the following days, I processed my images in my usual fashion using Deep Sky Stacker, Starnet 2.0, GIMP 2.10, and Topaz Denoise AI. As you know, my main target was the Blue Horsehead Nebula. I had researched many photos of it on the internet, and a medley of them are shown here. It is a beautiful reflection nebula in the constellation Scorpius, and only about 400 light years away. I ended up stacking 57 3-minute images for a total of 171 minutes, or nearly 3 hours. Out of Deep Sky Stacker, I stretched the 16-bit TIFF file in GIMP to pull up the nebula as seen in this image. It was just enough to begin seeing a Horsehead Nebula outline, but you have to look closely. Starnet 2.0 pulled out the starless image, revealing a clear Horsehead shape and, of course, bright star artifacts. So far so good, but processing the image from here was a bit disappointing. I could not extract the details and textures of the dark nebula brown colors that were so obvious in the beautiful reference photos that I found on the internet. This is the best image I could develop, given the raw data that I collected. A 
it just doesn't have the pizzazz I was hoping to achieve. And frankly, I am a little stumped. Of course, more integration time would definitely help. It always does. But I'm wondering if the UHC filter was good for capturing the blue color, but not good for the darker nebula. Did I block the darker nebula colors by using that filter? If I want to add more data, keeping in mind that I'm using a color camera, is it best to take some luminance images with a UV IR cut filter and only that? Will that add the additional texture and nebulosity that I'm missing? If you have some suggestions or experience to share regarding this target or the filters, please share it with me in the comments box. My intention is to gather more data on this target and release another Blue Horsehead Nebula update in the future. I would definitely appreciate your help. Hey, I never promised that all my videos would have great deep sky photos, did I? <laughs> well, at least the other target I imaged came out very well. That is precisely the reason why I go after at least two images on any of these road trips. I want to increase my chances for capturing at least one good deep sky image every time I venture to a remote site. So I again followed the same post-processing routine as I described earlier. DSS, GIMP, Starnet, GIMP again, and Topaz Denoise. Here are the images of the Cat's Paw and War and Peace Nebula. This photo was created from only 45 minutes of total integration time, but these targets were quite easy since they are glowing emission nebula and not dim reflection nebula like the Blue Horse Head. I also find the strangely complex patterns created by these nebulae to be rather intriguing. The Cat's Paw Nebula truly looks like a cat's paw. It is located 5,500 light years away. It is an emission nebula and a star-forming region in the constellation Scorpius. And similar with its celestial neighbor, the War and Peace Nebula, they both roughly have a visual brightness of about magnitude 10. The War and Peace Nebula spans about 400 light years across. It is about 8,000 light years away and for some reason is giving birth to some of the largest stars ever discovered. The nebula is believed to be hiding massive protostars shielded by dusty pillars of molecular gas and young stars wrapped in expanding cocoons of gas and dust. Well, I think that wraps it up. Thanks for joining me again on another episode of Astrophotography Japan. Despite the mixed results, for me the trip was a fun adventure and educational. I hope you enjoyed the video too. If so, please give a thumbs up and leave some comments especially if you can help me improve the Horsehead Nebula processing or imaging results. Until next time, here's wishing you clear skies and exciting adventures ahead. My name is Paul Cheesejaw, and I am an astrophotographer.